project. Joining me now is Oleyemi Aluren. She's a public defender with the Legal Aid Society, the nation's oldest and largest firm for low-income families and individuals. And following Mr. Youngblood's death in Rikers Island Correction uh, facility, Commissioner Lewis Molina released a statement saying, we will work aggressively to determine the circumstances surrounding Mr. Youngblood's death. My deepest sympathy goes out to his loved ones. I mean, help us understand what is going on inside of Rikers Island. The people at Rikers have not been convicted of any crime. Why, why are they still there? Why can't we get them out of these horrific conditions? Because they placed they've placed a price tag on their freedom. That's that's the problem with cash bail and these pretrial detention centers. Rikers is infamous, and I think Rikers infamy has led people to believe that it's this place for especially horrible offenders or criminals. Rikers is a pretrial detention center where anybody in New York City that's arrested and cannot afford bail, that's where they go, and they're there indefinitely until they get a trial, which sometimes takes years, especially in the case of the pandemic, which is slowed down, slowed down trials, and now the criminal system is operating. But what has happened in particular in the last year is 15 people died. 15 different people died in Rikers. And if you've seen the photos, they have people packed in cells, 30, 40, 50 people in one cell, people not getting medical attention and neglect. And it's not just a matter of the officers are out, because I want to be clear, Rikers has more, more people in corrections than most police departments and most different jails in this country. And still, it's not just that the, the officers aren't showing up. It's that they're choosing to ne be neglectful. There have been several of the different deaths of the people who have been found in their cells where they see officers... Uh, different corrections officers had passed them repeatedly in rounds and just chosen not to give them the help. Today at the Rikers rally, we heard from the 12th person that died in Rikers last year, his mother. And she said that her son asked for medical help repeatedly. He told his girlfriend he was sick. And, he, and when she told him to report it, he said, they just say you're lying. They say you're making it up and they choose to neglect them. So this is a willful, a willful problem that has been persistent. And it's not new. It's been around since Rikers inception. It's just something we're hearing more about because these deaths are piling up with COVID and everything. Thing happening. I don't think people really truly process until you're maybe in the situation in your own life or you know someone um, what happens to you when when you become dehumanized in this way. And I mean, um, once you enter Rikers Island, they give you a number, right? You become an inmate. Yes. And then basically, no one believes anything you ever say. You could say, exactly. my leg is broken. It could be sticking out. The bone could be sticking out and obvious. But you are an inmate, and therefore, def by default, everything you say is thought of as a lie from, from those corrections officers. I mean, were the efforts... You, you attended a rally today um, to, to ensure that Rikers is actually closed. I mean, I remember before the pandemic, they passed funding to close it. Why is it still open? They give $860 million a year to Rikers. They've, the closed Rikers campaign has been going on, but we haven't seen no real substantive changes or steps towards it. And it's because they're choosing. They choose to have it open. Judges, despite that they've declared it a state of emergency, despite the fact that it's being called a humanitarian crisis, despite the fact that they keep offering us thoughts and prayers for all of the people that are dying and promising it'll be different, judges and prosecutors every day are continuing to send people to Rikers. You keep seeing attempts to roll back bail reform and all the same initiatives that have led us to this point. So it's important to remember this is not an accident. This is not this anomaly. This isn't a tragic event so much as this is the culmination of deliberate steps taken by the people that, the people that have the power to change it. I guess the theme of tonight's show is everyone is just people. I don't care right. where you are, whether you're incarcerated, whether you're not incarcerated, whether you are without a home temporarily, you're a person. Oliemi, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you. And please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.